Good morning, children. Today we are here to discuss Unit Six: Structure of Atom of Tenth Class. Within this chapter, we are going to discuss today is electronic configuration. What is meant of what is meant by electronic configuration? Systematic arrangement of electrons in orbitals depending upon their energy. Systematic arrangement of electrons in orbitals. Depending upon their energies is called as electronic configuration. It gives information about it describes about how electrons are distributed within atomic orbitals. Arrangement of electrons in atomic orbitals. How it can be get distributed in atomic orbitals. It gives information. It also follows one standard notation. In which electron containing atomic subshells are placed in sequence in order they are arranging that particular atomic subshells in order and within that part sequentially and after the other it is existing. The standard notation of a particular electronic configuration is n into l into superscript of x. Where n indicates nothing but dot number, principal quantum number, which was discovered by Niel Bohr, which indicates a dot letter, n letter, means a main shell. It talks about energy of that particular shell. Where n represents dot, as if it's a quantum number, which is discovered by Sommerfeld, and it can be get represented as dot l. Depending upon principal quantum number, it talks about subshells and what type of orbital does it exist. We have seen clearly if n is equal to four, means what fourth main shell. L is equal to zero s orbital, one p orbital, two d orbital, three f orbital. In that particular way, depending upon as a total quantum number, we can identify. Subshells of that particular atom there, of that particular element, where x represents what number of electrons in atomic orbital. In orbital, how many number of electrons are existing? For example, if I am taking two, yes, two, two is nothing but what principal quantum number. And principal quantum number means what? Two indicates means what? N is equal to means what? L shell it is indicating electron, and S indicates what? As a total quantum number, it belongs to L is equal to how much value? Zero. If it is zero, we are getting what orbital? S orbital. In this S orbital, how many electrons are accommodated? Two electrons are accommodated. In that particular way, systematically, the information of electronic configuration could be given. It also gives information about what behavior of electrons, how electrons are behaving. Not only that, but the reactivity of that particular element also will come to know whether it is a more reactivity element or less reactivity element, depending upon. The nature of the nature of an element, and as well as the activity of an element, can be easily identified. That is electronic configuration. This electronic configuration has certain uses. It is used to determine the valency of electron. What is the 
in as valency of electron. Electrons which is which are existing in outermost orbit. Already we have seen clearly. If I am taking this is nucleus, first orbit, second orbit, this orbit is called as what? Outermost orbit. The electron that is existing in valency orbit is called as nothing but what? Valency electrons we can talk it up here. Example if I am taking here sodium. Atomic number is how much? 11 is atomic number. First shell is having 2 electrons. Second shell is having 8 electrons. 2 plus 8 is how much? 10. Third shell is having only 1 electron. Therefore, this 1 electron represents nothing but what? Valency electron. It has 1 electron extra after attaining octet configuration. That particular information it will be giving there itself. Second one is what predicting the properties of group of element to which group they are belonging depending upon valency electrons we can identify it belongs to first A group element. In the same way depending upon valency electron to which group element they belong to in group all similar properties elements will be get arranged hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium in that particular first day group is having what similar properties elements whose valency is 1 first day group element, second day group element, third day group element, fourth day group element, fifth day group element so on eighth day group element depending upon the nature of elements in what way the group and group of the particular which group that does the particular element belongs to can be easily identified that is the use of this one not only that one it can also be used, it can be get users for interpreting of atomic spectra. Spectra means for splitting up into different uh, different subshells when electric field as well as magnetic field is applied to itself. Interpreting of atomic spectra about that one also, this electronic configuration will be giving information. Next thing is what the maximum number of electrons existing in main shells. If I am taking a bit, as I am talking about, they represent what main shells. They represent as what the sub shells. There were number of electrons is what the maximum number of electrons existing in main shell can be represented based upon principal quantum number and formula is equal to what two n square. Therefore, shell, K shell, L shell, L, M shell, N shell, N is equal to 1, N is equal to 2, N is equal to 3, N is equal to 4. If I take N is equal to 1 K shell, in which only 1, one is there, 2 into 1 square is equal to 2 electrons, it can be accommodated in K shell. L shell it can accommodate 8 electrons, M shell it can accommodate 18 electrons, N shell it can accommodate 32 electrons. In that particular way, electrons can be get accommodated in main shells. That point we have understood there. Similarly, maximum number of electrons accommodated in subshells based upon a formula called as 2 into 2L plus 1. Depending upon this, uh, L value means what? Asymptotal quantum number. This asymptotal quantum number depends in what? On what number? L value it will be depending on itself. If n is equal to 1, n is equal to what it will be? L is equal to 0. If n is equal to 2 means what? L is equal to 0 and L is equal to 1. If n is equal to L, if n is equal to 3, L is equal to 0, 1, 2. If n is equal to 4, 0, 1, 2, 3. So on depending upon L value, the maximum number of electrons existing will be based upon this formula 2 into 2L plus 1. Based upon that particular formula, we can accommodate electrons into suborbitals or subshells. How we can accommodate here? I have given one example there. K, K means frequently in K shell. It indicates what n is equal to 1. n is equal to 1 means what n is equal to 0. It can accommodate n is equal to 0 means what s orbital. And it is belonging to 1. First shell s orbital in which 2 into 2L plus 1 formula, therefore 2 into 0 will get us what 1 electron, 2 electron, 1 subshell will be there. That subshell accommodate 2 electrons. 2 into, means what 1 will be there, 1 into 2 is how much? 2. Similarly, n is equal to 2 means what? 0 and 1. n is equal to 0 as well as 1. 
second substrate will be having two s orbital in which two electrons can be get accommodated. Where l is equal to zero means what? Two into zero plus one. One into two is how much? Two. L is equal to one means what? Here again formula. Two into two into one plus one. Two into two 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 plus two plus one is what? Three. Two three is what? Six. Therefore, six electrons will be accommodated. Similarly, l is equal to three if I am taking l is equal to zero one two. Means what? Three s orbital will have two electrons. Three b orbital will have six electrons. Three d orbital will have ten electrons. So on, electron accommodation takes place. If I am taking l is equal to four, l is equal to zero one two three four s four p four d four f. If I am taking an example here, then for l is equal to zero means what? S p Zero, one, two, three. S, P, D, F. In this two electrons, in this six electrons, in this ten electrons, in this fourteen electrons. Total number of electrons will be equal to how many there? Thirty-two. If I add these all things, I will get how many electrons here? Thirty-two electrons. If I add all these, I will get eighteen electrons. If I add these two things, I will get eight electrons. If I add this one, I will get two, two. A 1832. In that particular way, electrons can be get accommodated into subshells. Into what shells? Subshells as well as main shells. Main shells they will be accommodating this upon formula called as main shell. Subshells they can be accommodated into what? Two into two L plus one. By using this particular formula, electrons accommodated in subshell. S is equal to L is equal to zero means what? S orbital. L is equal to one means what? P orbital. L is equal to two means what? D orbital. L is equal to three means what? F orbital. Therefore, depending upon F orbital and the value, electron accommodation will be taken place. As electrons are entering into the orbitals, means what? Atomic orbitals. They follow three principles. What are those? How what principles they follow? There it says they follow three principles. To describe more than one electron, if it is entering into atomic orbital, they follow three principles. First principle is called as Pauli's exclusive principle. Second principle is called as Abu's Abu's principle. Third principle is called as Hund's rule. Based upon these three principles, electrons accommodation into orbitals will be taken place. That systematic arrangement of electrons within atomic orbitals, depending upon their energy levels, is called as electronic configuration, and it has a standard notation called as n into l into superscript of x. N represents principal quantum number. L represents azimuthal quantum number. Principal quantum number talks about main shell. Azimuthal quantum number speaks about what sub shell. X represents what number of electrons accommodated in orbital sub shell. Yes, orbital two electrons. P orbital six electrons. D orbital ten electrons. F orbital fourteen electrons. In that way, electrons will be accommodated in the electron. Into sub orbitals, depending upon three principles, that is Pauli's, Abus, as well as Hund's rule. We'll discuss about these principles in later class. Thank you, children.